fine. You've already lined up. We are here today with Wolfpack Baseball as the Wolfpack will take on Miami of Ohio. Cooper Hinch will be on the mound to start off the game here for the pack. Into the batter's box for Miami of Ohio is Evan Vertigo. First pitch fouled off the third base side. Hinch starts ahead today, 0-1. Pinch fires and deals. Swung on and missed. 0 oh 2 to start today. As for Cooper Hinch so far this season, through 14.2 innings pitched, he has 28 strikeouts, trying to increase that lead here as that fastball misses outside 1 and 2. Hinch has been able to work ahead a lot this season early in the counts, and it's played to his advantage. That one is sent into right field off the wall and Vigorito is going to stand up for a double to start it off for Miami of Ohio. That breaking ball pitch found the inner half as it was flown into right field got over the head of Jake Montgomery. And starting off the first with a runner on second, nobody out. Fires to Richards, misses just outside, 1-0. and -0. 
That one is swung on and missed. Finds himself back even in the count, one and one. Hinch, the other season, has only given up three earned runs. That one will catch the outer half to make it one and two. Hinch finds himself back ahead once again through both the batters faced. Working quick, here's a one and two. Swung on and missed. Strikeout number one of the evening for Hinch. John Marin is going to step up to the plate here from Miami of Ohio. Sophomore will be batting the three spot here today. Just misses upstairs, one and now. Look close to here, but not to the home plate umpire tonight. One of delivery catches the bottom half of the zone, evens it back up one and one. Inch working quick. One out, runner on second. Fires and deals. Just misses outside, two and one. Hinch looking to work back here in the count. And that's exactly what he'll do. Strike two will even it up at two and two. The two men holding the runner on second will be the second baseman tonight, Garrett Langdon, batting leadoff, followed by Michael Weaver at short in the nine hole. Fires and deals fell off the first base side. Miami of Ohio with a very good scoring opportunity here early. So they don't want to strain a runner on second when they had no outs to start the inning. One of the toughest opponents NC State has faced thus far. Miami coming in tonight, ranked 19th in the nation. The Wolfpack ranked third. And strike three, sit him down as that'll be his second strike out of the evening and they're now two down for Cooper Hinch as he will face the cleanup batting Jackson Bayer. And a good breaking ball there by Hinch. It'll be 0-1. With those two strikeouts, Hinch crosses a 30 strikeout hold of the season. Current single season leader is Cameron Gardner. Excuse me, Carson Fratty with 55. Fires and deals, misses outside. Hinch looks in, catching tonight, Reed Richards. Fires and deals, lined, shallow center field, gonna drop for hit, runner crosses third. Throws just late, gets away from Richards, and the runner will advance to second for a RBI double here in the first. And that's huge for Miami of Ohio, is now they've got one in to take an early lead here, and they've got a man in scoring position still at the heart of their lineup. This will bring up number 15, of Bryce Schreiner, senior from Orchard Park, New York. And Schreiner's in a big, big position here. 
Two outs, a runner on second once again. That one will just miss upstairs to make it 1-0. Hence checks on his runner, fires and deals. Can be a line, shallow center once again, gonna drop, play at the plate as the throw goes off the backstop. Another RBI double, back to back, gives Miami a two nothing lead here in the first. And the bats are alive here early for Miami. We'll see how the Wolfpack can handle coming from behind here as this isn't something we see much for them. Doesn't happen too often. Coming up from the left side, Sean Lynch. Lynch is a junior from Parma, Ohio. Once again, this, Mi this Miami squad is Miami, Ohio, not Florida. Just misses downstairs, 1-0. Lynch is batting 217 on the season here, so this is a big opportunity for him to increase his average and put his team in a great position. Caught in the zone, 2-1. Tough play over at third base. Fires over the first. Not in time. Lawrence fielded it plenty of time. Fired over the Smith. Had to pick it out of the dirt. Just could not do it in time. An infield single lead to runners being on first and third. Still two outs. For Scholl. Fastball just misses inside, 1-0. and The runner goes, and this one is hit into left field, and that will drop as well as the Red Hawks have another run. Now 3 nothing with two outs here for the Red Hawks as two are on. And that drops right in front of Alex Creech. That'll bring the D.H. Lampert up to bat. Catches the outside corner, 0-1. This isn't a position the Wolfpack have been in very much this season. They went to Panama City Beach the other weekend and took care of business pretty swiftly. So seeing the Wolfpack down early is not usual. As for Cooper Hinch, thus far into the season, he's allowed six hits. Tonight, he's given up five. And the runner goes. Called but it does not strike. matter. Called. Strike three. And that will do it here for the top of the first. Wolfpack find themselves behind. Three, nothing. Hinch was able to record the three strikeouts, but only after five hits were served across the plate from the Red Hawks.
Lang Langdon out with a ground ball to third. That will bring up Dunlap here. And a great play by the guys in the five and the six spot there. Indeed so. For the Red Hawks to shoot it across in time. That, that misses one's miss. low and outside. And a shot in the center field. And a great play by the center fielder to turn his hips and go find that one as a loud second out for the Wolfpack. That'll bring up number 22, Carson Dunlap now. Looking to provide some life here for the Wolfpack with two down. And that one's going to miss outside, 1-0. And that one is inside, 2-0. Looking to start off the bottom of the first with a bang down two outs. Inside three and out. And it's got to be perfect here for Lagnan. As he is up big in the count. Offering to Dunlop. Swung on and missed. Three and one. He wanted that one. Three and one still in a big spot here for Carson. Bases are, are empty though here with two outs. Fires and deals, catches the outside corner, strike two. And a great job there by Davis to work back in the count. It's now worked full. Firing and deals. Wide third base side will get out of play. Full count. A full count offering here from Davis. Maybe fouled off once again as Dunlap stays fighting here. Three and two. and deals misses outside ball for winning that full count battle and the Wolfpack have some life here with a runner on and two outs that will bring up Reed Richards catching tonight two down and a runner on here for Richards as the Wolfpack have a chance to stay alive in the inning Looking to do some two out damage, which we did a lot of prior to spring break. And that one just misses Richards. He's going to duck out of the way to make it 1 0. Richards leads the team in RBI, sitting at 17 currently. He's had a hot start of a senior year. Is that one missed inside? Two and out. Langdon leads over at first. Pitch to Richards. Swung on and fouled out of play here. Richards. 
Richards, not known to be one to get hit, has not been hit once this season. In other terms, Jake Montgomery has been hit 13 times. Yeah, that's a wild stat right there. 13 times in one season. It's ridiculous. And we're only right at the halfway point. Yeah, he's almost getting hit once a game. Richards way ahead in the count here. Runner on first, two outs. Trailing by three. And Fly. a pitch. Left field. Shallow. Still running in, and it will drop. Some miscommunication there from the Red Hawks. And that ball was put at a very nice spot for Richards, and some more damage could have been done there. Very much so. But instead, we'll have runners on the corners here for number 17, Alec Creech. Striding into the left side of the batter's box here. Creech tonight playing the left field. Trying to f claw our way back into this one. Trailing by three. And a shot from Creech into a gap. And that's what the Wolfpack needed is one's going to come in. And Creech will have a stand-up double to keep the inning alive here. That two-out damage has been prominent. For the Wolf Pack, and just like that, it's 3 1. And we'll see another left handed batter as number 10, Al Morris, will step up to the plate. He's got two in scoring position here. A chance to really bring the Wolf Pack back with two outs. And the ball in the dirt is going to make it 1-0. Al Morris finds himself ahead, 1-0. And, and the ball chopped over to second base. And that will end the inning. But the Wolfpack are able to get one back as it is now 3-1. Red Hawks on top.
And Cooper Hinch will stride back out to the bump for his second inning of work. And he will be tasked with facing number one, Corey Miskinosh. First pitch from Pinch just misses inside one and out. And that looked like a good miss to me from here. Good pitch to start the top of the second. Just a hair too far inside. Working quick, pop straight up. Gonna be. That could be a tough one. Still in the infield dirt. And Michael Weaver will get to that one as there's now one down in the inning. And that will end. Hinches three strikeout first. At this point, let's just get the outs where we can get them here. Exactly. As the Wolfpack are trailing three to one. Big, Sw big swing on and missed. Hinch starts the count 0 and 1. Hinch deals. Catches the inside corner on that breaking ball. 0 and 2. As for Hinch, he is up to 28 pitches so far. Strike three, ring him up. As they're now two down for the Wolf Pack. And Hinch finds himself back where he's very comfortable. Four strikeouts on the evening. Hinch has been a dominant force all year for the Wolfpack. A steady, reliable guy for them to start games. Falls behind here, 1-0. He's been the starter for game one every single series so far at home here for the Wolfpack. That he has, and I don't believe it's going to change anytime soon. Definitely not. And that one's chopped foul down the first base side. Stays foul. One and one the count. Fires and deals. Caught him swinging. One and two. Davis comes in tonight. One for one. As that one catches the corner, sit him down, and that will do it for the top of the second. And he didn't seem to like that call very much. As that one could have been a little bit questionable, but it'll work for the Wolfpack as they go three up, three down. And that half a work.
And we are back here in the bottom of the second inning as number 13, Jacob and Yazita will stride to the plate. Davis misses outside and one and out. Jacob in a spot that he knows well, way ahead in the count. Misses outside once again, 2 and 0 the count. And after a 3 up, 3 down, last half of the inning, the Wolfpack looking to fight back here more. And that one will miss and make it 3 and 0. Great spot here for Jacob. Way ahead here, once again, 3 0 the count. Bars and deals, misses the, catches the inside corner, that is, excuse me, three and one. That one might have been a makeup call there. He's still way ahead, I'm not complaining. And it will be the three one pitch here to Jacob. Davis kicks and deals. Catches the outside corner, three and, and two. He is fighting back well here, Jack Davis is. Using lots of pitches in the process. Full count. Here's the delivery. Swung on, felled first base side. Stays fell. Another full count. Jacob fighting along here. Miami of Ohio enters this game nine and two. The Wolfpack thirteen and one. As this is a premier matchup around the league here today. And Jacob will reach with a walk on the full count. And that will bring up Clay Lawrence. Indeed so, he will be playing third base tonight. And that one's down in the dirt, 1-0 to Lawrence. The Wolfpack down to their eight hole, looking to bat around here and bring the top of the lineup back up here in the second. And that one will sting, but Lawrence will take first with it. And there's going to be two on with no outs here for Michael Weaver. That is Clay Lawrence's second hit by pitch this season. I think I've seen more hit by pitches in these home games this season than I have ever seen there's, watching baseball. There's definitely been a lot. And a, part of that may be due to the fact there's not much of a bullpen here. There is not much of one. Sometimes you feel like you're watching a 9 u baseball game where these kids just started pitching from the, some of these opposing teams. But Jack Davis has been good so far. But now there's two on and no outs here for Michael Weaver. Takes his sign in from Nate Johnson on the third base line. Runners first and second, still nobody out here in this one. And he's going to lay one down. Was able to get it down, but bounced back behind here of the catcher, 0-1 count. Weaver is known for having a good drag bunt. So I wouldn't be shocked if we see it again to try to happen right now. As for Weaver, he has four hits in his 22 at-bats. And you see the first baseman squeezing in. And he's going to... Tries to lay it down there again, but it was high and away, and it's now one and one. Weaver's first career hit this season came due to a bunt. A little dribbler down the third base side gave him an infield single. And he's going to lay one down once again. And Weaver will do his job with that one as they advance the runners as there's now one down, two in scoring position for the top of the order. Now bring up Garrett Langdon, his first at bat. 
was a ground ball in between the 5-6 hole where he did not beat it out. Close play, just a tad late. And the intentional walk was on as there's now bases loaded for Jake Montgomery with one down. Not a bad play call there from the Red Hawks. But they had, they did just give an extra guy on the pads for Montgomery who's got a powerful bat. As for Montgomery, he has nine RBIs alongside 19 runs scored this season. This is outside 1 0. No place to put him. Looking to claw back in this one. Pitcher Davis working from the windup here. Catches the outside corner. That was a nice off speed pitch there by Davis. Once again, here with bases loaded. No need to go from the stretch. Working from the windup. Fires and deals. Swung on a miss at a pitch in the dirt. And Montgomery is not happy with himself on that one. He's now falling behind in the count, one and two. Trying to stay alive is here comes Davis. Grounded, second base. Gonna be a tough play, he tries to turn two and he'll get the out at two. And but the Wolfpack are slowly fighting back as that will work for an RBI to make it three to two. Working here from the left side, runner goes. Pitches high, throw is wide. And the two out steal will work here for the Wolfpack as there's now two in scoring position for Dunlap. Back to a one run ball game here in this one. Wolfpack trails by one. Firing and deals, catches the zone, one and one. I'm up enters. Get me over curveball once again. One and two. And a Big spot here for the Wolfpack. Trying to fight to stay alive. Fires deals, misses downstairs in the dirt. Works it back even, two and two. Here comes the offering. And this one's shot. In the center. Oh! And the ball was dropped. And we can't tell if that was during the transfer or if he. But he looks to think he didn't make the catch. As the center fielder bangs his glove, and that's going to be a two RBI double for Langdon. As long as that stands, that will put the Wolf Pack ahead for three. And that's huge for the, the cause for the Wolfpack as they now take the lead after going down 3-0 early in this ballgame. There's going to be some talk here from Miami of Ohio and the umpires. No doubt that the catch was made. Just a confusing bit on if it was on the transfer or not. And it looks as if the call will stand here, and the Wolfpack are going to take a 4-3 to three lead. 
two RBI double. This will bring up Reed Richards, who singled in a shallow center. Trying to keep that alive as he's one for one on the afternoon. Once again here, State takes a 4-3 lead. Firing and deals, fly, gonna be right side, has plenty of room, trailing toward the line, and it'll make the catch. So the inning will be over for the Wolfpack, but enough damage was done as they take a 4-3 lead as we head into the top half of the inning. It's just weird that we didn't have problems like And this will be the top half of the third inning here as number zero John Mayron strides up to the plate here to face Cooper Hinch. Hinch so far, five strikeouts, five hits for three earned runs. It's been enough, though, here so far for Hinch as he has the lead, 4-3. to three. As that's going to be a line, third base side stays in play. And Creech gets to it plenty of time and will hold him to a single. And Marin really challenged it there. He really thought about going to second, but Creech makes a great play to go hustle over to that ball and stop him at a single. Jackson Bayer will straight up to the plate now. With one on and no outs. Hinch so far, 37 pitches thrown. First offering catches the outside corner, 0 and 1. The strike zone has been a little bit all over the place here today, mainly in favor of the Wolf Pack here. But that one will miss to make it one and one. Taking some extra home field advantage any way we can. <laughs> that is exactly right. Run on first, nobody out. Here's a one and one. Fly first base side, gets out of play. Hinch finds himself ahead, one and two. This is a spot Hinch is used to being in early. As Hinch tonight has five strikeouts through two innings.
fires and deals, just misses outside. A good one and two pitch there by Hench. Now the count will even up to two and two here for Bear. That looked about to be the same spot as strike one. Indeed did. And he did not go. It'll be three and two, full count. And a delayed call over to the field umpire, and it's still three and two. Inch trying to fight back. Misses outside, ball four. And Hinch facing a little trouble here to start off the third inning as there are now two on and number 15 Bryce Schreiner will come up to the plate. Did we score three in the second? What did you say? I think we scored three in the second. Yes, three, three. Double play in plenty of time. A great play over there by Weaver at shortstop. Called his own number. As it goes from two on and no outs to one on and two outs. As number seven, Sean Lynch, comes up to the plate here for the Red Hawks. Not one runner standing on third base. 90 feet away from tying this one up as that catches the outside corner 0-1. And that one will be popped up in a weird spot. Langdon backpedaling, makes the catch, and that will end the top half of the third. And a great job by Hench to get out of that jam there early. Having two on, no outs. Was able to fight back there with some help from his middle infield as Michael Weaver records the double play and Garrett Langdon with the pop out. Score after two. NC State four, Miami three. And number 17, Alec Creech, will stride up to the plate as the first pitch is inside for a ball. And that one will miss as well, 2-0.
It is now 3-0 as Al Morris has to stride back there again to get the ball. And the 3 0 pitch to Creech. He's going to let it go, and it's going to be ball four, take your base, as the speedy left fielder is on here with no outs. Also, bring up Al Morris. His first at bat was a ground out to second, and that ended the top half of the first. Excuse me, bottom half of the first. Apologies for the camera problems. Runner on first here in this one. Misses inside, one and out. Five straight balls here from the pitcher. Al Morris has one hit and six at bats here for the Wolfpack. Misses downstairs, two and out. And the pitching change to the freshman Grant Davis. He has not been able to find his zone yet as he's had six straight balls to start off this outing for him. as a ball came into play from the Wolfpack bullpen. Morris will, Morris will now step into the box again and the count will resume. Here comes the 2-1 pitch from Davis. Downstairs, 3-1. Davis, seven balls, one strike so far to start off this outing for him. Working ahead, here's a 3-1 delivery. Misses inside, ball four. Two batters face, two walks here for Davis. As now number 13 for the Wolfpack, Jacob Inezita strides to the plate. His previous at bat was as well a walk. And the catcher going to have a talk here with Davis as the freshman just has not been able to find his own early. First offering will hit for a strike as it is 0-1. The second pitch will be outside 1-1. One one. Trying to do some damage here with the runners on first and second still with nobody out. And that one is swung on and golfed into right field as the runners will only get one base over, but there is bases loaded with none down here for the Wolfpack. That'll bring up number nine, Clay Lawrence, and a big opportunity here. Corrections, the pitcher for Miami of Ohio is Jamison Beck. And that one will miss as well. Want to know? Early struggles here for Beck as the bases are loaded with no outs. Well, in fact, trying to add some damage that misses downstairs. For both teams, this would be a quality win to pick up and a quality series to pick up if with winning it. Fires and deals, catches the zone on that one. Trying to work his way back in it. Two and one.
Once again, bases are loaded. No place to put them. That's fly to right side. Runner on third, looking to tag. It's Creech. Coming home in plenty of time. Slides into home, and the Wolfpack will go up five to three now with two on. And here comes the shortstop, Michael Weaver. He bunted in his last at bat. And we'll see what he does here with the runners on the corners in one down. The catcher calls his first and third play. And we'll see what's in store here. And swung on from Weaver into right field. Can be another at tag play at the plate. Throw is up the line. Al Morris will get in safely. No slide needed. And Jacob Inuzita will get to second as two sack flies equal two runs for the Wolfpack. I'll bring up top of the lineup, Garrett Langdon. And after a rocky start for the Wolfpack, they've been able to find their place again and take this lead 5-3. to three. This one is fouled out of play, 0-1. And, Garrett Langdon's previous two at bat so far was a ground out in the third, followed by an, an intentional walk. This Wide first base side gets out of play. Langdon behind, 0-2. Here comes the offering. This one's going to be outside to move to one and two. Here comes the one and two offering against Langdon. He's behind one and two. Down in the dirt. He held it. Runner will advance the third. It's now two and two to Langdon with a runner now on third after the stolen base on the wild pitch. Trying to do some two out damage. Something the Wolfpack has been known for so far. Their head, 6-3. Fouled straight back, count remains two and two. Up and out. Full count. Full count, man on third for the leadoff batter, Garrett Langdon. As for Beck, pitcher in this inning, he's thrown 23 pitches so far in just this inning alone. As that's grounded first base side, going to be a tough play. Dives in the first as Langdon, can't get there. Ground out the first will end the home half of the third. Great hustle there by Langdon, just not enough. But the Wolfpack increase their lead to six to three, as we'll go into the top of the fourth inning. And Cooper Hinch will stride out for his fourth inning of work here.
Coming back here into the top of the fourth, Wolfpack holds a 6-3 lead. As that's flied straight up, gets out of play down a third baseline. Hinch finds himself ahead, 0-1. Once again, the Wolfpack in the previous inning, scoring two to increasing the lead. 6-3 as that's fly to left side, drops in front of the left fielder, Alex, Alec Creech. That'll be a leadoff single here in the top of the fourth. Miami of Ohio has been able to get their bats going early in the innings, but nothing since that first inning has come across the home plate. Also bring up Lambert. Firing a deal from Hinch. Misses downstairs, one and out. Downstairs once again, two and out. The temperature here in carries a brisk 51 degrees with a high wind chill as that's aligned to left field. Creech is in there. Creech is there with plenty of time. Big out number one. Creech has had some action over there in left field here today. And now number one, Corey Miskinosh will come up to the plate here, batting from the left side. Here comes the pitch from Hinch, and it's a bunt. Trying to push. And a great play by Al Morris at first base. A diving catch from Morris. What a heads up play as there's now two down in the inning with one on. Unbelievable there. Just lucky that Shaw was able to read that and get back the first. And the runner on first. With a walking lead as Hinch steps off the back of the mound. And the runner goes. And a great ball by Richards. Throws him out. And from two back-to-back -back great plays from the Wolfpack defensively, the inning is over, and we'll move to the bottom half. And that was just a beautiful ball there from Richards. Throwing a dirt over the second. We got bottom four. Yeah, bottom four.
coming back here into the home half of the fourth. First pitch misses outside 1 and 0. Misses outside 2 and 0 here to Jake Montgomery. Montgomery comes up tonight with a line of a line out to center. Tono is outside, ball three. This is outside, ball four. And a good start for the Wolfpack as they will have a runner on here to bring up Carson Dunlap, the three hole hitter. Dunlop so far tonight has an RBI double to his name. That coming into the right center gap. Alongside of a walk. And that will hit the zone for a strike to Dunlap. Wolfpack looking to open up their lead here. As the hot streak has continued for the Wolfpack here today. Runner goes. And Montgomery speeds in there. And he'll reach second now as there is a runner in scoring position for Dunlap. The Wolfpack coming into this game are one of the hottest teams in the country. As they are up to number three in the nation being 13-1. and one, As their one loss coming at home earlier this year to James Madison. That stolen base is Montgomery's 10th stolen base of the season. As that get me over curveball finds the outer half of the zone. And a chilly day here in Cary, North Carolina as the wind is howling. <laughs> and that ball will be in the dirt. That says there's a switch in that building up there. I'm going to go check it out. Catcher could not find it as it was just resting on home plate. And now a runner is to third for Dunlap. The wind here in Cary, 12 miles an hour with gust up to 23. The weather was starting to warm up here at the beginning of the month. But as we get into late March, it's getting a little colder here now. And that will be enough to score one and barely is out on that play at first. But a run for the Wolfpack will make it seven to three as the catcher Reed Richards comes up to bat here. The Wolfpack have scored seven unanswered runs here today. After trailing three, nothing after the top of the first as that's fly down the first base side gets out of play. As for us here in Cary, next weekend, Saturday, 74, Sunday, 72. And that'll be a big change from what we're dealing with right now in the booth. Chop straight back, camera stays in place. The win two here to Richards. As there seems to be some action in the Miami of Ohio bullpen, And this one will beam Richards as for the second time today, a runner will take their base from being hit by a pitch. That will be Richards' first hit by pitch on the season. We'll now see the left fielder Alec Creech come to the plate. Creech thus far tonight has an RBI double followed by a walk. Swing and a miss here. He'll be down 0-1. And, and 
That one will miss. One and one. And a ball at the same exact spot, but this time it'll be called a strike, one and two. I'm trying to stay alive here. Here comes the offering to Creech. Swung on and missed. Big strike out there for Miami. We'll now see the first baseman, Al Morris, come to the plate here. After making a great defensive play in the field on a popped-up bunt down the first base side. Great so far. Excuse me, Morris has a ground out to second alongside a walk. He takes this one. It'll be a 1-0. Oh. believe that one missed upstairs. Runner on first, Reed Richards. He reached on a hit by pitch just a, two batters ago. That one just misses again, 2 0. Swung on and missed by Morris as it is 2 and 1. Here comes the delivery. Catches the outside corner. Two and two. Beck fighting his way in this one through one and two thirds of an inning, 43 pitches thrown. That is a lot of pitches to not even get through two innings so far of work. This would be my guess to see his last inning on the mound today. Fires and deals, misses downstairs, full count. A 3-2 pitch to Morris. And a ball that looked to be off the plate a little bit will be called strike three. As Morris goes down looking to end the inning. Looked to be about a ball, ball and a half off, but that is one that needs to be fouled off or at least tried to be fighted off. Instead, rang him up and that will do it for the fourth.
never tried getting a... There could be a contraption like that for a phone, though. Yeah. And the top of the inning is on your way as we see Cooper Hinch up on the bump here again. Fly to right side. Drops right in front of the right fielder of Montgomery. The Red Hawks have had a lot of early in the inning hits, but haven't been able to capitalize since that first inning to work. That is the eight hit that Miami has gotten so far tonight. Although having eight hits, only giving up three runs. Another leadoff single to start the top half of the inning. We also bring up Hoffman. Catches the inside corner, 0-1. And the Miami of Ohio fans get a little riled up. They trail by four. Yeah. Foul straight back. Oh and one. Hinch looking to make another quick inning. Checks on his runner, fires and deals, foul straight back. And the camera will stay up this time. We've seen it get knocked down a couple times here today. And apologies for all that. But we're all intact here as the count is 0-2. Chopped foul once again. Count remains 0-2. And, Here comes a first offering here. Excuse me, call strike three. Got him down looking as there is one down and one on here for Miami of Ohio. That'll be Hinch's sixth strikeout of the evening. That one will miss outside, 1-0. Oh. Sedlock steps in for Miami. Just misses downstairs, 2-0. That would Ole Miss again, 3-0. Not a place that Cooper Hinch has been too familiar with here tonight. And that one right down the pipe. 3-1. Hinch fighting his way back into this one. That one grounded to first base. And Morris able to get there in time and record an out. Looked to turn two, bobbled it as he went to field it. Made a smart move and decided to just take the one at first. Good job by Morris there to not get greedy after making a mistake and trying to turn something that wasn't there. Able to get one out. And there'll be two outs with a runner on second for Bayer. Runner on second, Davis. And she'll step off here. Bayer is a one for one on the evening thus far. Good. 
And a good pitch there by Hinch as he has found his rhythm since the first innings ended. Hinch ahead 0-1. Firing in deals outside. He evens it up at 1. And that one will miss downstairs, two and one. Langdon bouncing around at second as that misses outside, three and one. And the runner goes. Just misses inside. Wow. Ball four. I thought that was a good pitch there by Hinch. Amazing spot. Home plate umpire said no. He had the batter ducking for cover, and that ball just landed right on the inside half, but not enough as now the Wolfpack will meet it up in the infield here with runners on first and third. Along with that, Davis stole third on that previous play. This is a big spot here for Miami of Ohio as you need some runs to claw back in. And you now have an opportunity with two on. Shot foul third base side. Hinch finds himself ahead 0 and 1. As for Hinch, he's closing up on the 70 pitch threshold. Through four and two thirds, he has six strikeouts, has given up eight hits with three earned runs. Next offering catches the inside corner. A good pitch there by Hinch as he's fighting back. Trying to get out of another jam. Just misses outside. Frank and deal swung on and missed. And Hinch able to get out of the jam once again. As we've seen this happen about three times now, and he's been able to deal and get out of it. Shows the type of player he has been for the Wolfpack here this year. And that will do it for the top of the fifth. Wolfpack still holds on to a 7-3 lead.
And the bottom of the fifth is going to be on your way here. The Wolfpack hold on to a lead, a touchdown to a field goal. And we'll see if they can add to that lead. First miss of Jacob, swung on and missed. 0-1. Oh and, and for the fences here in a four-run game. I don't blame them. And grounded. that one is grounded to first base for an easy first out for the Red Hawks. They'll sling this one around the horn. As next up to bat, number nine, Clay Lawrence. He has been hit by pitch and had a sack fly so far. Foul yeah. straight back, 0-1. Lawrence trying to do some damage here. Have one out, nobody on. Here in the home half of the fifth as that's grounded. The third base gets right underneath of his glove for an infield single. And those are the type of mistakes you can't make when you're playing a team like NC State. They're not going to make many errors. And if you give them chances, they're going to capitalize. As we'll now see Michael Weaver, the shortstop, come to the plate here with Garrett Langdon, the leadoff second baseman on deck. As for Weaver, he sits 0 for 0 on the day, thus because he has two sack flies. One coming using his bat to bunt, the other a fly ball to the outfield. Here comes the 0-1 delivery. Catches the outside corner. Weaver finds himself behind 0-2. Oh that one will miss to make it 1-2. and two. Man standing on deck, top of the lineup, Garrett Langdon. But as for now, it's Weaver time. Runner on first, one out. Fly to third base side, gets out of play. Good oh, contact two. there by Weaver, just a little bit too far left. The Wolfpack with a big chance to open this ball game up here. Outside, two and two. Catches the outside corner, and that will do it for the Weaver. Now the top of the order will come up to the plate as the second baseman, Garrett Langdon, will come in. He's had two ground outs, one the first, one the third, alongside an intentional walk. And both ground outs have been close plays at first base. So we'll see what Langdon does here. Fouled off first base side, gets behind 0-1. Here with two outs, runner on first, Clay Lawrence. Man at the dish, Garrett Langdon. Fireman deals, grounded third base side, gets by the third baseman, finds its way into left field. And that one will find a hole. And now we're going to have two on for the two hitting Jake Montgomery. As for Montgomery, he's aligned out to center. Alongside a walk. Runners first and second. Two outs. Curveball misses upstairs. One and out. The runner in scoring position, that being Clay Lawrence, reached on the air to third. And a big
big swing and a miss there from Montgomery. And that one will miss outside. Down in the dirt. Good block by the catcher for Miami. Able to keep Langdon at first and Lawrence on second. And that one will be fouled off. Two two. Yeah. Home plate umpire checking in with us on the, on the count. And this one's thrown back. And I guess the count was 3-2 as the runners advance. That will load the pieces up. As now Carson Dunlap will come up to the plate with the bases loaded for the three-hole hitter. Uh, so Dunlop, he has, a, he has had a walk alongside a sack fly and a two-RBI double. He has three RBIs on the night with a chance to add more with bases loaded. Outside ball one. Dunlap is someone who could really open the game up here for the Wolfpack being in a situation like this. Not the guy you want to see at the plate if you're Miami of Ohio. And he will watch that one go across the plate. Even to count up, one and one. That one catches the outer half and is it is one and two. Trying to fight to stay alive. Does not want to leave the bases loaded without getting at least a one. You know the outside's been calling hot. Time to protect as that is outside. It catches the outside corner. And the Wolfpack will strand three in the bottom half of the inning as it is still seven to three going into the top of the sixth.
And the top of the sixth inning is on your way as there is a pitching change. Number 11, Jacob Jones. Now comes on to the bump here for the Wolfpack. That will end Cooper Hinch's night. Followed by seven strikeouts, giving up eight hits alongside three runs, no walks. Hinch looking to keep credit for his win as Jacob Jones strides onto the mound for the sixth inning to work. Outside ball one. Lynch comes to the plate for Miami. That one will miss outside as well. Lynch one for two on the night so far. Jones trying to do what Hinch finished. Continue that dominating work as that hits the outside corner, bringing it back even. Swung on and missed. Two and two the count here for Jacob Jones against Lynch. A good job from Jones to fight back here. After a rocky first two pitches. And he is able to ring him up. Strike three, and there's the first out of the inning. Great work there by Jacob Jones. S continuing that dominating effort. That one will miss just upstairs, 1-0. Next effort, catches the bottom half of the zone, evens it back up, one apiece. Here comes a one-on-one -on -one effort from Jones. Misses outside, two and one. The two and one, fly to left side, drops just fair. And the trend continues, the Red Hawks able to start off the inning with a hit. We'll see if this time they can capitalize. That turned into a double there for Scholl. This will bring up Lambert. Flied first base side, gets out of play. 0-1. As for Lambert, he is 0-2 on the evening. They swung on and fouled straight back. 0 oh 2. That one up and away. 1 and 2. Jones again trying to work fast. 
Here comes the one and two. Flied right side. Montgomery underneath of it makes the and play. And a cannon. Wow. As Montgomery shows off why you shouldn't run on him from the outfield right there with that cannon. Looked like a prime Yasiel Puig throw right there. I don't think Shoal was going to test it, but Montgomery showed off why you wouldn't. Got two outs now here in the six. Just misses inside, one and out. Misses upstairs, two and out. Jones working quick. He has two outs, runner on second. With Kutchie at the dish. Misses outside, three and out. A little bit smaller of a zone here against Cushy. Three-o offering outside ball four, and two men are now on for the Red Hawks as they look to capitalize. This will bring up Davis. He is two for three on the evening. This is who you want up for the Red Hawks here. Not so much for the Wolfpack. First offering the low and outside, one and out. In case you Wolfpack fans missed it last night, the NC State men's basketball team will be moving on to the Sweet 16 after an overtime win against Oakland. Misses inside, two and out. Jones, although throwing three straight balls so far, has not missed by much. Catches the inside part of the zone just like that. It's 2 1. And Offering. Jones will find the zone again to even the count at 2 and 2. The Wolfpack just showing where they're ranked third in the nation. Swung on and missed. And once again, Miami of Ohio leaving runners stranded. And the bottom half of the inning coming up next.
And we are back on your way here for the bottom of the sixth inning as the catcher, Reed Richards, will come up to the plate here. Richards so far, so far tonight sits one for two. As a hit by pitch, fly out to right alongside a single into shallow center as that's chopped down third baseline, stays oh. foul. Excuse me. Don't know about that, but it'll stand, and I guess it'll just be a strike against Richards to make it 0-1. What a break it was for Miami. That would have been a tough play to get Richards out at first. Misses it outside. One and one. That one will miss down in the dirt. Two and one. Richards finds himself back ahead here in the count. Here's a two and one, two and one delivery. Just misses the inside corner. Three and one. I think if the catcher was able to get that one, he might have been able to get the strike call there. But without it, it's going to move to three and one. Just bouncing off of his palm. And in these cold temperatures, that has got to hurt. That oh. one will miss upstairs. And ball four, take your base, Reed Richards. As we'll now see Alec Creech come up to the plate. Trying to increase the four-run lead going into the seventh and final frame. As tonight is a doubleheader. Creech comes in tonight with an RBI double, walk, and a strikeout. And that one catches low and away for 0-1. Seemed just about a ball, ball and a half outside and down. Same spot, different result, 1-1. One and one. That one might have even been an inch or two higher, but gets the ball call there versus the strike on the first one. Upstairs ball two. Creech trying to work his way back into this. It's two and one. And that was the pitch to hit as he swings by it, two and two. Catchy on the mound as that is chopped first base side. Makes the easy play over at first, holds on to it. And that will move Richards over the second for one out. One runner on for Al Morris. The first baseman will have a runner in scoring position here as they could try to open up this lead a little bit more. As for Kachi, he replaces Beck going three innings. And that one will get through for a single for Morris. Runners will hold at third, but Morris will reach on a single with a shot through the gap. Runners on first and third. One out. For Jacob. He has a walk, single, and a ground out to first so far. We'll see if the Wolfpack draw anything up here with the man on first and third. Well, they're not going to need to as Inezita rips this one down the line, almost taking out Morris's legs in the process. 
But a run will come in, and it'll be 8-3 to three with two on now for Clay Lawrence. Lawrence played at the hot corner today. He had a single in his last at-bat as he's been hit by a pitch and sack flied as well. That one is fouled straight back to be 0-1. Offering upstairs, ball one. Runners on first and second. Here comes the offering to Lawrence. A good off-speed pitch will hit the zone as there are two strikes now on Lawrence. Trying to fight and protect. Choke and poke if they need to. Here's a one and two offering. Curveball misses upstairs. Evens it two apiece. If I was catching in this situation, I would go back to that breaking ball. It has froze Lawrence every time thus far. And that's Maddie's exactly what he'll do, but this one will get away as there are now two in scoring position for Clay Lawrence. And alongside that, we have a full count. And even though that breaking ball went over the head of Lawrence, they wouldn't put it past him to see it again. And Not needed, as that was a fastball that hits the inside corner. Sits him down, swinging. We'll now see the shortstop, Michael Weaver, come up to the plate. Two on for Weaver here. Weaver so far has had a sack bunt alongside a sack fly and a strikeout. And that one is shot up to the second baseman who snow cones it. And that will end the inning as the Red Hawks will have their last chance to tie it up or take the lead here as we go to the top of the seventh.
And the last chance here for the Red Hawks as they are down to their final three outs. Jacob Jones looking to close this one out here for the Wolfpack. Down in the dirt, 1 0. Oh. And that one up and in, 2 0. Oh. Trying to work quick and a work fast. Currently down two and out. Three and out that is. And it will have to be perfect here for the Red Hawks to be swinging at this one. Wind is picking up here in carry as that catches the outside corner. Three and one. We do apologize, we will not have streaming services for game two here today. But we will be finishing out this one here today as this is the last inning of work and it's a full count here as Jacob Jones deals it. Strike three, works back in the count well there. After going down in the count early, he's able to work it back on the bump and there is one down now for the Wolfpack. Jones fell behind 3-0 and and came back just as quick as he went down. He went 1-2-3. And this will bring up... Is that misses outside 1-0 and to Mick Carthy. This will be his first at bat here in this one. Catches the outside corner. Working quick, next delivery up and out. That is flyed right side. Montgomery will be underneath of it. And he will put that one away. And the Red Hawks are down to their final out in need of four runs. Be a miracle comeback for him. Jones looking to get out of this. One, two, three. As Wolfpack leads it, eight, three. That one will miss one and oh. Bear at the dish, he's a one for one as that's flied. Past the first base dugout. Even the count, one apiece. Two outs, no runners on. That pitch misses outside, two and one. As for Jones, he sits at three strikeouts on the evening. That one catches his own, it brings us back into it, two and two. Jones looking to finish it off here. And he kicks and deals. Just misses as there's a full count now with two down. And the Red Hawks are down to their final strike. As for the Wolfpack, they have had 10 combined strikeouts looking for 11. And they get it. Strike three. That is your ball game. As the Wolfpack will advance to 14-1 and one on the season. 
Miami falls behind to 9-3, heading into game number two. And that is all we will have from you here today. Thank you all for tuning in for another Wolfpack baseball game. Once again, final score in this one, 8-3. Miami went ahead 3-0 after the top of the first, followed by 8 straight Wolfpack runs. Once again, final score on this one, 8-3. Thank you for tuning in.